for that introduction and uh, good morning everybody. Good morning. Thanks for coming out so bright and early. And uh, I hear that some of you had a good time last night, so that's uh, all the more appreciated. Uh, it's an honor to kick off the uh, final day of your 63rd annual conference. Bonjour et merci d'être ici si bon nombre et si tôt ce matin. C'est comme un privilège pour moi d'avoir ce troisième et dernière journée de votre 73e conférence annuelle. In fact, I'm particularly honored when I first heard that the theme of this conference was Are You Prepared? I thought this group really is dedicated to getting ready for the new mandate in the Army. <laughs> Now, of course, I know that uh, this was actually a reference to the tragic tornado that struck Ottawa in 2011. And the conference focus is on making sure communities are prepared to face the unexpected. But still, with that in mind, I want to take this opportunity to make a few things clear. First, if and when members of your community play to my office, you need not fear the unexpected. Because I can promise you, we will not hit you like a tornado, no matter what you might have heard. There will be no surprises, and we will work with you to help you serve your citizens. But all that said, the best way you can do that is to be prepared. And so I'm here today to do what I can to help explain our processes to you, so that you'll know exactly what to expect when the Ombudsman's office calls. So I'm going to get into process in a minute. Before I do that, I just want to emphasize this is a bit of a spoiler alert. I'm coming today with a message of goodwill. Uh, I want to emphasize that municipalities are a key stakeholder group for my office. And my goal is to establish positive and productive relationships with all of you. It's by working collaboratively that we can best serve the people of Ontario. Now, Although our full jurisdiction over the municipalities have been delayed only came into effect January 1st, I know that many of you are quite familiar with us because of our role as closed meeting investigator. Our office has been the investigator for approximately half of Ontario municipalities, and that's since 2008. And this has given our staff valuable experience, valuable experience with municipalities, and it's helped us understand that you are all different it has also allowed us to help citizens with hundreds of complaints and help councils ensure that their meeting practices are open, transparent, and consistent with the law. Unfortunately, I know it also led to a lot of confusion and concern because it cast the Ombudsman Office in a sort of law enforcement role. And for many people, this created the mistaken belief that our role was to police local councils, which is not at all what we do. In fact, a, an enforcement role simply does not allow an ombudsman's office to play with strengths. Now, what an ombudsman's office normally does, and what ours excels at, is to resolve most complaints informally. So we do a great deal of work behind the scenes to humanize government and remove the irritants confronted by citizens. Simply put, we look for simple, sensible solutions to problems. And we usually do that without much fanfare and without having to resort to formal investigations. And we have many examples of these individual success stories, and we share them in our annual reports, on our website, through social media, and in our monthly newsletter. We have already shared several good news stories with municipalities, and there will be more to come. This kind of work, this is the kind of work our office has done for more than 40 years at the provincial level. And I think it's helpful to have that historical perspective because I know that from the municipal vantage point, it may seem that Bill 8 and the expansion of our mandate came quickly. But it's actually something that has been discussed since the inception of our office. The very first Ontario Ombudsman, Arthur Maloney, opened the office in 1975, and right away he realized that he was receiving hundreds of complaints that weren't about the provincial government. There are about municipalities, the level of government closest to the people. <coughs> Unfortunately, the Ombudsman Act did not allow Mr. Maloney's office to help these people. And as the complaints mounted, he called for the act to be amended. <laughs> Finally, it was, but not until 2014. So the good news about this long incubation period is that the Ombudsman's office has had 40 years to demonstrate its value to, its value to citizens 
and improving provincial government services. And that's 40 years of what Mr. Maloney called humanizing government. 40 years of developing relationships with senior public servants throughout the provincial bureaucracy, right up to deputy ministers and cabinet ministers. So this legacy is a strong foundation for our new jurisdiction. And my goal is to build the same strong working relationships with you, as well as the other new stakeholders in the universities and school boards. So let me give you a quick primer on how we work. Our office handles more than 20,000 complaints every year. And most of them you never hear about, because they are quickly and quietly resolved, usually by our staff making a few phone calls. That's the bulk of what we do. We resolve cases as quickly as possible and at the lowest level possible. So my senior team and I meet regularly with the managers of provincial government organizations so we can alert them to problems and give them a chance to fix them before they mushroom into something worse. And in doing this, we often avert the need for a major investigation, simply by making sure complaints are being addressed by those who are directly responsible. Occasionally, we will come across issues that haven't been resolved and then warrant formal investigation. But remember that we are impartial. We don't take a complaint uh, on face value and we do not advocate for the complaints. We look at the facts, we investigate. And as I like to say, uh, coming from a small town, it doesn't matter how thin you make the pancakes, there are always two sides. So we know that. So even more rarely, we will tackle broad, systemic problems that affect hundreds or even millions of people. Those are the cases that you probably have heard about, such as our investigation last year into the massive building problems at Hydro One. So in those cases, we will publish a report with recommendations, and those recommendations are almost always accepted because they are feasible recommendations. They're feasible recommendations that improve public services. And so our aim is not just to resolve individual complaints, but also to make sure that the underlying problems are fixed and that future complaints are avoided. Now that's what I call a win-win-win situation. It's a win because our recommendations are accepted. It's a win for the person who complained and had their problem resolved. And it's a win for the public servants involved who are often aware of the problem but don't have the wherewithal to get it fixed. Now I'm sure you're all wondering how does this apply to municipalities? So I'd like to give you an update on how we've been doing things since January 1st. So we've received during that time more than 1,200 complaints about municipalities from about 250 different municipalities. And how many formal investigations have we launched? Today, zero. This should not come as a surprise because that's, because the vast majority of complaints have been resolved quickly and informally. And with most complaints being referred back to the proper local mechanisms, in some cases, our staff make informal inquiries with the relevant municipal officers, and most of the time they are able to resolve problems to everyone's satisfaction, all without the need for formal investigation. And what are people complaining about the most? Well, you can probably guess. In the wintertime, it's snow removal. Now it's water and sewage issues, or garbage collection. Ontario works, housing programs, and of course, bylaw enforcement account for a lot of complaints as well as does customer service in general. But we have many good examples of the informal resolution already. A couple of weeks ago, one of our staff helped a 16-year-old homeless youth get Ontario Works funding after it was initially denied at the municipal level. In February, we helped a man sort out a long-standing problem with a snow-covered sidewalk in front of his property, and it only took a few phone calls from our staff to determine that his property had been inadvertently removed from the snow removal roof. However, the number one most common topic of complaints so far has been the municipal councils themselves. This category includes complaints about council members and their conduct, policies and decisions of council, which generally speaking we do not get involved with, as well as communications and conflict of interest. As with all other complaints that we receive, the first thing we do when we receive a complaint of this nature is determine if it can be resolved legally. And this is where you can ask yourselves, are we prepared? Do you have a process for handling complaints? Do you have a code of conduct? Better yet, do you have a local accountability officer like an integrity commissioner, or an ombudsman, or both? From the start of this expansion of our mandate, 
Our office has made it clear that we encourage municipalities to have their own accountability officers and clear processes for handling complaints. And our role is to be there for your citizens, but as a last resort, to ensure local mechanisms are working well and to recommend ways that they can be improved. This is exactly what we've done at the provincial level, level for more than 40 years. We don't substitute ourselves for provincial investigative bodies or administrative tribunals. We don't do their investigations and we don't reopen their files. Rather, we review the actions they took and where warranted, we recommend reforms. So we're doing the same thing with municipal complaints. If it's a matter that the municipality or its integrity commissioner or the local ombudsman is dealing with, we won't intervene. If those avenues have been exhausted, or if it's a matter that's beyond their scope, then we will review it. We will look at the circumstances and the reasons for the decision. Did your officers or your officials act in accordance with the relevant legislation? Did they consider the issues? Did they provide sufficient reasons for their actions? Those are the types of things that we will look at. And we've already dealt with a few complaints like this about local integrity commissioners, for example. But we were able to determine quite, quick, quite quickly that their actions were reasonable. But we've also helped to improve the process for all concerned. For example, a council member complained that she wasn't told that the integrity commissioner's report on her conduct could be discussed in an open meeting. After our staff made informal inquiries with the municipality, it made changes to ensure that all parties are given clear information about how code of conduct issues are handled. Of course, not all complaints can be resolved easily and informally. Occasionally, the watchdog has to show its teeth, and sometimes a formal investigation is warranted. But I can promise you that if and when we do launch a formal investigation related to a municipality, you will be informed. You will receive formal notice, and according to our standard practice of over 40 years, you will have a chance to respond to our findings before any report is released. As an ombudsman promoting procedural fairness, I've always been careful to proceed fairly. Parties are entitled to know what we are referring to and have ample opportunity to have their input considered. And of course, we have the right to an explanation for the reasons of the decision. So once again, you could prepare for this simply by putting in place some local accountability processes. We have seen quite a lot of variation across municipalities so far. Some have a of conduct, with no integrity commission. Some have neither. If and when we do conduct a formal investigation where this is an issue, I can tell you I won't hesitate to recommend that the municipality take these steps as a way of improving local accountability. I am being asked regularly these days what our office is doing to encourage and promote the establishment of accountability officers at the local level. How are we responding to local councils who say there's no need to set up such an office because the office will do it for free. So I checked, and I realized that we've been saying all along that our role is not to replace local accountability officers. That would not be feasible or advisable. I think we'd probably all agree that local problems are best served, solved locally. And the ombudsman's best role is as a last resort. So our office has said this in our last two annual reports, our latest province-wide report on closed meetings, and in press releases before and after the implementation of Bill 8. We've said it in articles, interviews, webinars, and at least 30 slide presentations so far. We also stress this point in consultations with the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing. But lest there still be any doubt, I'm happy to reiterate it today, as often as I need to in the future. I encourage municipalities to have codes of conduct and local accountability officers. This is simply in the best interest of local democracy and the people that we all serve. So my office's role is to ensure that these mechanisms are functioning as they should, and to help whenever necessary by recommending solutions and best practices to bolster those efforts. We will also use our unique position and unique powers to monitor and address issues that are beyond the scope of local officials, outside their jurisdiction. We constantly track the issues that we see across the province, watching for trends. In particular, we look for problems that may be recurring or
are spreading across municipalities. Our powers of investigation can take, take us into places where local accountability officers cannot go. And don't forget, if we find real issues relate, relating to bodies in the provincial jurisdiction, we can go there too. Finally, I want to assure you that being prepared for the Ombudsman oversight works in both ways. So my office has been working to prepare for oversight of municipalities for more than two years, back before Bill 8 was even called Bill 8. Last fall, many of you participated in our roundtable consultations, the partnership with Canada's public, pol public policy forum. The feedback you received from you was enormously helpful, and I thank you for sharing your expertise and your candid views with us. I have made it a priority to meet and speak with as many stakeholders as possible, and especially on the new jurisdiction. You will see me and my team all over the province, participating in municipal conferences, trade shows, and workshops in every region. I'm particularly grateful to be here this morning. I hope all of this demonstrates our preparedness for this important new responsibility, and most of all, our commitment to working with you. We all share the common goal of ensuring transparent, accountable local government. J'espère que tout ceci montre à quel point nous sommes bien préparés pour cette nouvelle responsabilité importante, ainsi que notre engagement à travailler avec vous. Nous partageons tous le but commun de garantir la transparence et la responsabilisation du gouvernement local. So I want to thank you again for this opportunity. You know, I realize in some contexts people don't like to say I hope we meet again, but I believe that if we do. <laughs> I believe that if we do, it can be a positive experience. Either to have your practices vindicated by a credible, independent competent, or to receive constructive feedback that will help you be more responsive to the needs of your stakeholders. And in the meantime, I invite you to contact my office for any help that you may require, any information, anything you'd like to discuss. And uh, I'll be around this morning for a while, so if you'd like to approach me one-on-one, -on -one, I'd be happy to speak with you. So thank you very much, and enjoy the rest of your conference.